welcome everyone to, I always say a special different Monday, but this is definitely a very special and different Monday. Um, we had a wonderful conversation just ahead of this with some of the Emergent Commons people, um, and it was really nice to hear the enthusiasm and, and connection um, when we sort of, when I shared some of the, the reasoning, some of the, the things that have been going on uh, and some of the future plans. So we're really looking forward to sharing that with everyone here. And then, yeah, we're, we're sharing it with you first as members and people who've supported us and been with us along this journey. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just looking through gallery view and looking at lots of familiar faces and also feeling that sort of bittersweet energy um, and gratitude as well. So yeah, thank you for coming tonight as well. It feels really, um, yeah, I'm really glad we're doing this. I'm really glad to have a chance also for, for us to talk through um, everything we're feeling and, and everything that's going on and, and our um, decision, but also what feels especially meaningful is actually having reflection from you because this has been a process that, that we've been on and you know a couple of a few other people have been involved, but this feels, yeah, this feels special because we're opening out. Um, so yeah, like David said, we will talk a little bit about the um, sort of background and what, what we're both feeling called to what's happening over the next sort of five or six months and what we want to, how we want this final phase to look, because that's, that's cer certainly how I'm seeing it. It's this, um, Kind of very intentional final phase so um and yeah there'll be plenty of time for conversation reflection as well yeah and very much we're seeing this as a kind of conscious completion and pollination process of many of the ideas that we've been talking about many of the practices we've been using on the channel and thinking about how we can support the as, as I was talking it through with the Emergent Commons people before, it's very much a feeling that the, the energizing force that, that led to rebel wisdom and that we sort of were, were feeling and, and tracking in the culture is now feeling like it's going in different directions. And it feels like a very exciting time uh, for, so the, the, the reasons for us, I think if we start with sort of the reasons for us of why it feels like the right time to do this, um, there's a few different ones. One of one of them is, I think neither of us want to be doing a like. Well, as Rebel Wisdom has grown, it's become kind of its own entity. We have overheads. We have like it, it's a company. It's got kind of commitments. It's got we've got staff. We've got, and none of us, neither of us, wanted to be in the position where we're kind of servicing that, and servicing a kind of entity for itself rather than feeling like the creative, creative flow and. The creative kind of impulse that, that that really started and I think drew so many people to it in the first place and there was a danger of that coming in of sort of feeling like we were we were being driven by the entity rather than driving it um, and so that's even though and, and even though it makes no financial sense rebel wisdom is still doing really well like the courses are really popular like it makes no kind of financial sense to give up the brand but it feels like the right thing to do mainly from my perspective i'll let ali talk in a second about kind of how he's seeing things from my perspective it's really from an editorial perspective the rebel framing was right and necessary from the time that we began in 2018 onwards i feel very clearly that that rebel framing is no longer appropriate it's actually a synthesis time there was a kind of necessary rebalancing and and now it feels like a time of synthesis um, and I've got kind of a few ideas personally about how I want to kind of contribute to that and, and use my skills to kind of to feed that that sense of the necessity in the culture to kind of come to more of a synthesis position. Um, but the rebel framing just just feels like it's not it's no longer where the juice is and you can't build the new on oppositionality. You can point out the holes in the mainstream, you can point out the holes in the, the structure with oppositionality, but you can't build the new. And it's time for sort of, I think it's time for the, the heterodox space itself to kind of, as I said on the Stoa recently, grow the fuck up and actually start trying to build the new and build the institutions rather than just continue to critique. 
Yeah, and um, I'll just speak to the that point about the how re yeah, rebel wisdom very much, and I guess this is true of any project. It's become its own entity with its own sort of needs and its own um, uh, yeah, so it's something that we have to take care of and service and. In some ways, that's a really special thing, but in other ways, it's a lot of mental energy goes there. And I think what's what really has always been, I think, what's worked about Rebel Wisdom is that we've had this kind of spaciousness to feel into the zeitgeist and, and kind of it's been an intuitive process um, as much as anything else, of course, with practical elements of you know strategy or thought, but very much a feeling process of tapping into what's going on and speaking to it and finding the people who are at the leading edge, etc. Um, and, and for me personally, probably, if I'm honest, since the Biden win, um, there has been, uh, and that's, that's, I'm not saying because Biden won by any means, there's something some cultural massive cultural shifts, including that and then including, of course, the invasion of Ukraine, have made it for me harder to figure out what is the zeit what is needed right now and what is the zeitgeist and that has been for me a kind of a really personal inquiry it's then also really coincided with having a lot of deep spiritual experiences to the level i i thought i, I was unprepared for in some ways with the dmt trial and then the sort of emergence of um kind of writing a book really made me start thinking not, not interestingly david and i have been on the similar tracks to our thinking it's i've become very interested in how do we bring these ideas to the mainstream and there's obviously not a single way to do that and there's not a single mainstream either but what i felt increasingly drawn to is more so than the rebel framing is the wisdom framing and the question of what does it look like to actually embed spiritual values into culture in a new way. And I, I don't often talk about spirituality or use the, the S word sometimes on rebel wisdom, even though lots of people are very deeply spiritual. But I think the, the people who are here in this call um, compared to say, you know, our YouTube audience or our legacy audience from other areas who might be more interested in, um, more rational ways of knowing, I would say. I've always felt this slight uncertainty about how deeply to go into that. And so I'm feeling very cold to go to go really deeply into that and look at what is a sort of integral, mature, nuanced counterculture spirituality look like. So that, that's one thing that's really been driving me personally. Um, yeah, and then finally, just the, there is, I talked about, and I think we both feel rebel wisdom as a kind of third thing between us and that's that we all share and it's almost like it's saying okay my my time is done that's very mystical sounding but there is there is really a sense of that i feel this sense and it's bittersweet it really is bittersweet and there's a sadness to it but there's also a kind of um feeling of rightness to it of natural process somehow and so this um moving towards the, the very natural thing for both of us i think from the beginning of when we started this conversation was this idea of pollination and i keep having this image of like a dandelion of blowing a dandelion and the 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 spore is spreading and that for the next um five six months is i just feel incredibly drawn to that and also we don't quite know what it looks like which is it's part of the intention of these calls mm. Yeah, so in a minute, me and Ali will talk about our own personal plans, what what we're doing and 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 why. Um, but just to kind of complete the, the thought on the project itself, as Ali said, we're looking at pollination and what we really want. And it, and it will be an emergent process. I've got some very sort of solid ideas about things that that um, we're going to do before the end of the course but also there's an emergent quality to this and we'd like to make sure that as much as possible the the benefits and the things that we've created are taken on in some way 
So the courses potentially are going to be taken on by Emerge, which is a kind of sister organization. Potentially there could be a relationship between Emergent Commons and Emerge afterwards. Um, and we're also thinking to, to make some funds available for people who have projects in mind for whatever that might be. Like if someone wanted to do a facilitator directory or someone wanted to, to kind of take on indexing the content in a certain way that would allow people to find it spontaneously and it would sort of remain as a, as a resource. Because I think a lot of the films that we've put out um, are still ahead of their time in many ways. Like there are people who are still finding, I'm still getting comments on, say someone commented on the Richard Tarnas piece from 2018 the other day and said, oh my God, this could have been made. This was so prescient. This could have been made yesterday. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people like on, on this call, we've got a lot of people who are kind of quite ahead of the curve in many ways who are tapped into to novelty and what wants to emerge in the culture. And I think a lot of people will be making that journey so, so it, I very much want all of the content and all the things that we've done to be there for people to discover uh, serendipitously over time. And if there's a way of sort of maximizing that surface area and the way that people can kind of connect with the ideas, we're, we're really open to those, to those yeah, concepts. And if people have any thoughts that come up, yeah, we want to kind of help empower people to, to do projects and potentially also find some funds for, for it if it's required. Um, potentially a, a certain proportion of maybe the funds that we get from our last closing event that we'll we'll talk about. Maybe Al, if we talk now about like the defined plans for yeah. for the summer and the wrap up, and then we talk about may, maybe our own plans after that. Yeah, I thought I was. I'm going to suggest that. I think that makes sense. So the so we're now in May. I had to look, have to look at the calendar there. We're now in mid May. So what we want to do um, is. So obviously we, we have a, a course uh, that we're running uh, next month, which is a course we've wanted to run for ages. And there's something about having made the decision to wrap up has opened up like a fair amount of creativity because it's just, I don't know, there's a kind of freeing element to it. So we have that course will be the last course that we do, Embodiment and Flow will be the last course we do until the autumn. And then in the autumn, we're going to pull together a, I say course, but really a process where we want to, in a sense, kind of share the very best processes, models, ideas that we've come across over the last kind of four years. We don't exactly know what it looks like. We have some people in mind who, who we want to um, be facilitators there, but we want to use that as a process to also have in the kind of like implicitly woven through that this idea of action in the world because this pollination approach is, is the kind of mission uh, between now and when we wrap. So some sense of these sharing these tools and processes and allowing people to connect around them so that it leads into um, our very final event, which is going to be on the 5th of November in London. So we're gonna have an in-person event. We will also stream it um, and that will be a combination of, I think, lots of different things, really. Um, culmination of, of a lot of the the kind of narrative journey, but also a big celebration um, as well. So um, a, a big old party and a chance for people really to meet. Um, and like, and there's also David will talk about a couple of other things we're doing as well, which are going to be um, sort of in that kind of autumn period. But the idea with the event, we're not exactly sure how it's going to look but we want to have some of the profits from that event like a, a healthy portion of the profits for that event potentially go towards projects that emerge between now and then so you know people in the community broadly coming together and thinking hey we really want to do x y or z or we really want to initiate this project and so there'll be it's not going to be like uh, astronomical amounts of funding, but I think it'll be enough to fund like two or three projects to kind of get them off the ground. That's that's the idea. Um, so, and that November 5th event will be our kind of culmination. So that's, uh, David, maybe you want to speak about some of the other, um, there, there's one other event, obviously there's a big editorial process as well. Yeah, and it's also, yeah, it, it's also an opportunity because so much of the community has really come together since COVID as well, that we, I think we only had like 
quite occasional meetings before COVID and then the community developed, we launched the first course and that was an incredible journey. We realized like the depth that you can go to through a sort of an eight week course where you, you go on this journey together. And so this will be an opportunity for, for a lot of people, I think, to meet each other in person for maybe the first time. And so we very much want that to be a kind of pollination process and um, people kind of being in contact with each other, coming up with ideas, sort of whatever, whatever that looks like in the future as well. Um, so yeah, we've got the, the event to look forward to. Over the summer, I'm, as Ali said, this has sort of been a, a real release of creativity since the process of, since, since really sort of dropping in and, and accepting, since sensing into the, the sense that, okay, this, this narrative journey feels like it might be complete. And actually allowing that to land for, for me personally has been a huge process of unblocking what felt like a little bit of a sense of stuckness, which I was kind of feeling increasingly over the last year or so, kind of that sense of editorial thrust that I felt at the beginning of, of Rebel Wisdom sort of just felt it was a little, it all became a little bit more difficult, a little bit more, um, more of a, of a, of a struggle and felt like it was sort of more of a push rather than a pull over the last year or so. And then since kind of feeling into, oh, well, maybe that maybe it's over, like that there has been a huge release of creativity. I feel like tracking into where the conversation is at, especially with the Paul King's North Mary Harrington piece, where it just felt like, oh, OK, I, I'm kind of sensing into where the, the narrative is now and where maybe that kind of conversation is going again. And then over the summer, I'm really excited. There's a uh, I'm in Toronto at the moment filming with John Bavakey for the John Bavakey documentary that's going to come out probably in September. That's hugely exciting. So most of the filming is happening, is going to happen at the end of July at a retreat that Rafe Kelly is organizing with John. So Rafe is this amazing parkour practitioner who was deeply into Jordan Peterson's work, then became really deeply into, into John Bavakey's work. And he he kind of takes it, takes the kind of conceptual and turns it into embodiment, turns it into practices, turns it into the Logos. And he's hosting John for a whole week at this amazing retreat pl place that his father's built out in the woods. So that's going to be an incredible like visual feast of John's actually going to be teaching there as well. So we're going to have sort of John Pratt talking about the practices, demonstrating the practices, going through the process. Like it's going to be a, a really amazing it's developing into a really amazing film and it's a kind of natural progression as well and i think john's work is a net is a is a deeper resolution of many of the same topics that jordan peterson and others were bringing up like there was something about the crisis of meaning something about the need for philosophically engaging with first principles this kind of sense of a of a kind of this sort of post liberal moment of needing a new system and not really knowing what it looks like that John speaks to, and it's got to have religious elements. It's got to have integrate spirituality and spiritual practice, and that sense of the the journey that was that was started with Jordan Peterson and the Peterson phenomenon, I think, is now John and others around that conversation are for me sort of the natural place where that goes. You can you can kind of yeah, th there's a deeper resolution that incorporates spiritual practice, and the amazing thing about John, or one of the amazing things, is that he links together spirituality or religion and science without diminishing religion or spirituality and that's kind of the why i think he's such a liminal figure and so that that's going to be a really exciting film will probably be coming out in in september i think then i'm also daniel schmachtenberger i'm going to spend three days with him in june uh i don't know what it's going to be about yet he's just basically said I've, I've booked three days in the calendar. There's some things I've never shared with anyone. And I think we should, should sit down and, and, and make a, a piece. And the last time he said that was war on sense making. So um, I kind of trust him when he says he's got something of value worth sharing. I just say, yeah, okay, what, what time do you need me there, Daniel? So that is really exciting. That's gonna be three days filming with him at the beginning of June. And I've also been contacted by a Swedish filmmaker who wants to collaborate on a feature documentary based on Daniel's work, which could potentially take all of this, what I record with him in June, and then put it together with amazing visuals, this guy, and, and that could be a feature doc that could do the sort of festival circuit 
maybe in a year's time after like when he sort of had time to really um edit it and put put something pretty hopefully pretty amazing together i've seen his work and i think it's perfect he makes stuff with like big visual koyanatsi or baraka those kind of big big idea films really sort of visually driven so something like that with daniel's words i think has got a, a real chance of being a kind of crossover hit um and and could could be something quite extraordinary then there's also um an opportunity there's an event in austin the emerge gathering which a lot of the people who've been on the channel are going to go to so i'm basically going to do a whole series of interviews with them during that there's going to be a huge amount of content that's going to come out in the autumn and the final piece that i'm going to do is something glitch in the matrix three which has been kind of thinking about for quite a while and then telling the story of the last four years where I feel like it's gone off the rails, why the IDW failed, why, and, the, and also including the trajectory of Jordan Peterson, because like there's a, there's a deep sort of entanglement with the origin of rebel wisdom with the story of Jordan Peterson. So I feel like I need to complete that narrative, hopefully with an interview with him. Um, we'll see at the moment. I, I don't know whether that's going to be possible or not, but that that's kind of the last piece I think that, that will go out that will. And I feel like it, if if I can find the words and the narrative to tell the story of the last four years, then in, a, in some way, I feel like that's a kind of completion and maybe helping us to get free of that, of that kind of narrative. Like what is the second tier appreciation of what ultimately was, was a kind of anti, in the integral framing, like an anti-green movement that never really went beyond that into a place of synthesis. And so telling that story of, why it didn't go beyond that I've, oh, I've also got an interview with ken wilbur uh in denver in june as well because i feel like he's the right person to tell that narrative as well like there was no in a way the problem with the idw and with jordan peterson was there was no sense of a there there with a second tier understanding which integrated some of the dynamics they were seeing and rightly identifying in the culture but they they all ended up getting pulled down into the reactivity and emotionality of a sort of pre-trans so the it, a lot of people be aware of the whole of pre-trans idea of that what a behavior can either be kind of driven by more reactionary elements or it can be a more integrated perspective and i think there was a re, an insurgency against a kind of naive liberal worldview that was kind of building from 2016 onwards and the more pre-emotional rejection reactionary was kind of like brexit and trump and the the more the more kind of healthy version of that was peterson at his best the idw at their best but over time partly because of audience capture dynamics all of the trans more refined perspective got pulled down into the pre because that's kind of, and that that kind of morality tale of the alternative media and the nature of the warping effects of the ecosystem that we're in I think is a tremendous story that needs to be told um, for us to kind of learn from and then move beyond potentially. So that's that's kind of the wrap up process. And what feels really, really kind of nicely organic is that in some ways the, the wrap up of the project is itself the, the, the kind of demonstration of the story that's being told through the wrap up of the project that it, it, we could, we could continue. We, um but it just feels right to kind of leave the stage and almost demonstrate in leaving the stage that one has to yeah one has to kind of shouldn't outstay one's welcome um and there are as we'll talk about in a moment like ali and i both have like very solid ideas about the things that we want to go to afterwards but there is something something feels very natural and right as a kind of for want of a better word a kind of mic drop moment and yeah moving on to other things which we'd love to yeah we'd love to f for this not to feel like an ending but a, but a pollination and a deepening and a and a and all of i'd love for all of the things that we've that we've pioneered to to give new life elsewhere and we'd love to hear from you and everyone else like how that might how we might be able to support that in the process of of completion Yeah, I want to echo that. It's, it, it's not something that 
we want to do just by ourselves. That's that's really uh, for me. I feel very deeply. It's this, um, and and that that's more than just uh, the next five months it's about the story of the whole project it's about and this has been my personal journey as well over over the last four or five years is individualism I'm sort of a much less a rampant individualist than I was I think when when we started um but the, this sort of sense of the yeah sure collective intelligence but also a kind of a deeper sense of the connectedness and like McGilchrist would say the link between things and the link between people being more important than the disparate units and so this this idea of um what happens next being a dispersed phenomena is really really kind of important um so david are we going into talking about our own uh uh directions now yeah we've wrapped on the, the yeah bigger, yeah um why don't, why don't you start i feel like i've been talking quite a bit Sure. Yeah. Um, I think where to start. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I spoke to it a little bit before this, I think if there's a, an overarching theme for me, um, I'll be really honest, actually, like what one thing I've been feeling for a long time, ever since actually the, the, the intellectual dark web phenomena, and when we started talking about the need for an intellectual deep web, it's obviously been really core to, to what we've been about. It's like, the level of talking about ideas is never going to be enough. We need to embody them. So that was first. And then I started becoming more and more interested. <laughs> I started becoming unsatisfied with that. I started feeling, yes, that is really important that we embody ideas. But the actual entire sort of worldview and value system that we're working with is what needs to be transformed. And that's a bit of a kind of overwhelming thought because it requires all of us to transform that. How on earth do we do it? Um, that in part led me to a kind of return to the psychedelic world a, a few years ago. You know, I'd been quite involved in it and then stepped away from it um, because like any field, it's got all of its own dramas. And there's a great Reddit uh, thread called Hobby Drama, which uh, I always love to read, which is just, the dramas that come in any kind of field or hobby and psychedelics are are uh, no different to that so there's a lot of sort of um heaviness and i kind of stepped away from it but i was also in a sense stepping away from a sense of radical transformation in the process and this this idea that radical transformation is is viable and possible and the psychedelic capitalism stuff got me back in just because i was so outraged and that then led me to a much deeper process of actually asking, well, how do we transform cultural values to begin with? So that, that's, you know, that is the game B question for me. It's how do we actually change the value system that we're operating with? And I do really deeply feel that psychedelics have the potential to do that along with all the other, the whole ecology of practices, it's not just psychedelics, but psychedelics are the thing I get the most. So, I've, I've become very convinced and interested in the idea of moving psychedelics away from this focus on mental health and individual transformation into collective cultural transformation. And that's really what my book is about. And that's really what I'm kind of focused on for the next few years in, in one sense or another. So I'm going to be focused on that. Um, Certainly with the book, the, the book actually comes out about this time next year, and the manuscript is due at the end of August. So I'm very much kind of deep in the process of it now. It's kind of a weird thing because it's it's weird because it's so far away and I'm trying to imagine what the world might be like then. It's like full of zombies and robots and uh, where it's just kind of like this, but slightly different. Um, but as well as that, um, the, I have a number of other projects in the psychedelic space, one of which is quite a large one, which is not fully, not fully ready to talk about yet. Um, but I think a lot of what I'm doing over the next few years is, is very much that either through the book or through um, various other projects in the psychedelic sphere. And I also will always be absolutely fascinated by um, trying to make sense of culture and looking at deeper cultural dynamics and especially the internet. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but uh, it's a big deal these days. Um, 
So yeah, really looking at the sociology of the internet, looking at um, kind of expanding on the concept I, I put out with the age of breach, trying to make sense of the sort of mythic and archetypal levels of the internet, which I don't feel people are looking at quite deeply enough to, to really understand it. So that's something I'll continue doing and, and putting out um, written content, especially through through Substack. So, um, and yeah, finally, just I think the overarching theme for me is um, trying to find a way to bring these ideas into the mainstream. And that's also, aside from my love for psychedelics and psychedelic culture, my deep involvement in it, they are a kind of Trojan horse, even though I think that metaphor is dangerous, I'll use it anyway. They are kind of a Trojan horse into, transform into transformation for a huge swathe of the culture, and they will continue to be so. But it has to be done very well and very carefully. So I want to work with people to try and figure out what that actually looks like. Um, and that's the, yeah, the route into the mainstream um, and try to mainstream these ideas. So, yeah, just to let everyone know the structure, we will, uh, in a minute, we'll go to breakouts just so everyone has a chance to kind of express what they, they're feeling and compare notes with others in the breakouts. And then we'll come back and we will uh, kind of harvest what came out of the breakouts. And then we'll go to more of a sort of open Q&A uh, with any questions towards the end. There will also be, we've put in another call next Monday, uh, slightly earlier in the calendar, where just to allow this to land for people to kind of have um, any uh, kind of ideas they want to share, and then we will have that. Um, yeah, that we'll come back and we'll answer any more questions that might have come up in the meantime, so that we have um, an opportunity for, yeah. So if you don't feel any pressure to kind of get everything out now or if there's sort of a nascent idea or a nascent thought, then you can allow it to kind of percolate and then come back next week and we can we can kind of harvest it then. Um, but yeah, picking up on what Ali was saying about bringing these ideas to the mainstream, that's really where I feel called to go next is sort of my own personal hero's journey is sort of going from legacy media out into the kind of badlands of the alternative finding these amazing ideas, these amazing figures. And then I really want to complete that narrative by going back to the legacy and, and shifting that. Like for both of us, it's like, how do we shift the culture? How do we create an environment where people who would never think of doing personal growth work will do personal growth work? How do we kind of translate these ideas in a way that can potentially shift things on a more, like if it, for me really, if it's not a cultural movement, then it's not, sufficient it's not enough and in a way the container of rebel wisdom and even the container of youtube feels insufficient in some ways like i wh why shouldn't a series with daniel schmachtenberger be a netflix series why shouldn't uh, a series that I'm, i've been thinking about for a while with aisha can be like i've got a really clear vision for that and i think aisha is the right person to do a, pe a sort of deep dive into the culture war from a place of, in, of real empathy. And what I love about Aisha is that she is crit criticizing like extreme identity politics, but from a perspective of integration, from a perspective of, of um, empathy rather than reactivity. Why shouldn't that be a BBC series? I think it should potentially be a BBC series. I'm kind of in the medium term, I would love to set up a production company and start making, making pieces with kind of higher production values for legacy media or for whatever outlets will kind of potentially shift the conversation. So that's kind of where I feel my medium term destination is after, um, yeah, after Rebel Wisdom. And, and that is kind of exciting. I've, I've got a sort of vague outlines of an idea, like is there a sense-making project that can draw on the Web3 infrastructure like what would a sense making DAO look like what kind of how would you create some kind of project that is based around decentralized truth seeking with a token system like I, I don't know I don't know enough about web3 to know that but I'm sort of putting that out there as a as a kind of potential intention because that would be something that would be really fascinating to to, to see who, who knows like what that might look like um, someone in the group might know about sense making DAOs. Who might that be, Grace? Um, 
yeah, so that's kind of a, a potential loose intention. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear any thoughts, Grace, maybe in the, in the Q&A at the end, if you've got any thoughts to, to share, but it, it is a multi-talented group. So Austin. <laughs> um, yeah, Austin, I think, could be a really interesting cre collaborative, creative place. Um, I think you're going to be there in Austin, aren't you? Aren't you, Grace? Awesome. Um, and the other, the other piece for me is returning to the gender conversation. Like, I feel like that is something that I'm really drawn to. It feels like one of the, the main pressure points in the cultural conversation is a healthier conversation around gender. And it kind of ties into the, the men's work that we've been doing. And I feel like that articulating a healthy relationship, like it still seems to me to be under underneath a lot of the cultural dynamics, like this sort of, um, there is a gender dimension to it. And I think it's, I think it feels like, it feels like it's time that that conversation can be, ha can be had in a healthier way. And so I'm personally really interested to, I'm, I've kind of playing with the idea of a men's festival at the beginning of October that will be a kind of cohering of the, of the field of men's work in the UK. So I'm, I'm kind of inviting a few facilitators and wanting it to be a, a men's festival that is about kind of healthy masculinity, uh, transformational culture, like how do we become better men? How do we kind of have a vision of masculinity that is not in any way uh, oppositional or in any way kind of defined against the feminine, but is really about what is mature masculinity? Like my, my fundamental orientation is that what we what we need is not less masculinity but more healthy mature masculinity and so that's sort of really something that I feel passionate about and yeah it, it's one of the things that I know Ali as well feels like one of the most meaningful things that we've done is, is the men's retreats it's sort of been I, I know how Jordan Peterson feels when he starts tearing up when he talks about that because we've seen it ourselves in in our men's retreats like and it very much speaks to the idea of like how do we change the culture because we when people come on our men's retreats we ask them if they've ever done anything like that before and two-thirds of the guys have never done any kind of personal growth work no no kind of retreat at all and that's that's why we yeah that, that's something we want to do like we want to kind of create environments where people are yeah people who are completely unfamiliar with this work because we have to we have to it's no there's no point in just doing it for the the usual suspects like the workshop junkies are kind of well served already so how do you create something that is going to change yeah get people who are not used to this kind of work to to start looking at themselves and having more honest conversations and and kind of looking at their motivations and like yeah this is something that that feels very aligned um and i think both of us i think ali ali as well is going to go into to more we're, we're both going to continue doing retreats in in our own way but whether they're more psychedelic influenced or uh, men's work, but yeah, th th those are the different strands that I'm that I'm called to. Um, continue. I'm, I'm probably continuing to put out content on my own David Fuller YouTube channel, and that sort of will be the sort of foundational. I'm sort of seeing various projects as being different layers, but the foundational layer I think will be continuing to put out content um youtube podcasts as david fuller um kind of um either sense making with david fuller or just on the david fuller channel and that will be sort of like the foundational level um that that will yeah so that there will continue to be lots of the same uh content going out on and on our various kind of sub stacks and youtube podcast um yeah i think that's I think that's it. Is there anything you want to pick up, Ali, before we go into breakouts? No, no, it feels like a nice kind of completion there. Right. I'm going to open the breakout rooms now and see you back here in about just over 15 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Um, love to, yeah, just make a little bit of space for anyone to share anything that came up in their groups. We can go on. Uh, and then if there's any specific questions, maybe if you want to put them into the chat and we'll come to those towards the end after just sort of a little bit of harvesting from the from the groups. 
we'll, we'll risk just everyone unmute yourself and just ask and we'll see how see how that works yeah i must say something uh, actually i think it's a really i feel really positive and really happy that things are kind of coming full circle and that there is an ending um because it was kind of i would hate to see rebelism just fizzling on and i probably was moving myself moving on and now i'm going to stay till the end and hopefully make it <laughs> thing and it's been a really important part of my life because it has kind of you know i've taken even just the most basic thing like um participating in the the breakout rooms during the lockdown and knowing how those works you know how having a good structure for how to do that and then taking that into other spaces on the, online and um so i think that's one thing i think um yeah and i think what you said david about bringing into the mainstream you know i think i'm very much about that hanging out on the fringe and bringing new ideas into the mainstream and really delighted you know those that idea of um of of building new structures in in society movements in new institutions i think that's really great yeah i look forward to seeing what's happening in the future and also ali i probably i was thinking to sign up for the course anyway so I'll catch up with that one um because i think the courses were absolutely brilliant and i mean the live player course was just so amazing um just so much so for me, I think it has been really important part of my life and my journey as well. So, and um, yeah, thank you. Mm, thank you, Martina, for your support as well and um, dedication. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to personally echo exactly everything Martina said. Um, it's been it's been really brilliant and I had I had sensed the energy of the culture just change and that there was a certain stuckness and I think this is sort of the you know integrity to the end step over to the liminal through it and love the idea of the pollinating outwards and using the relationships making more space for those relationships somehow um, and yeah the live player course for me was awesome we, we are still talking in our um pod and redoing the course about fifth time now and it's it's just been brilliant all of it's been fab um so thank you guys yeah and really looking forward to what's next as well super so yeah thank you i hope yeah i hope to see so many of you at the at the event in november as well that will um we're going to make sure that there's a kind of <laughs> Yeah, it will sort of very consciously make it a, a, a kind of closing ritual almost. Um, and we're yeah, lucky enough to be joined by Daniel and, and a few other amazing people for that. Uh, Leilani, did you, did you just unmute yourself? No, accidental unmuting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. David, I can uh, speak up. Um, yeah. Growth. I feel growing here. I feel the real feel of growing. And that means some things getting left behind. You know, it's like the, oh no, where's the backup, right? But it's the, the growing that's just not about newness. See, what I'm seeing is you're bringing all that's been here. Woo, it just gives me chills. The, the, the pollination and the and the, what did you call it, Ali, the stakeholding? It's, it's keeping contact with this whole, each one of these individuals and saying, I'm thinking fertile ground. This is fertile ground that's being created and your whole idea of modeling now. That's what I, I feel like I wanna learn for the next five months, how you go about making, making this transition. Well, we'll That's be learning, Danny, so. I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, so will we. Thank you, Danny. That's it. That's exactly the learning. What does learning look like and feel like, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to speak to, to Brian's questions in the chat so we don't lose it, but, or actually, Brian, I, I, do you I, want to I, speak I, to I, your I'm, questions? I'm saving, I'm saving them, Ali. Um, ah, okay, fine, fine. Come to questions. Yeah. Um, if that's okay, I think we'll just harvest a few more. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Questions. 
we talked in our group about um rebel wisdom and like how this notion of of all each of us becoming locusts of sense making in our own worlds and um and i love that and have really like had that in my mind always um but we talked about like just not really knowing how to do that um and like i have a new idea every day but never really know if it's like going to work or worth pursuing or whatever so that's going to be really cool going forward like seeing how the synthesis can happen and seeing what other people are doing mm. yes thank you that really follows a little bit onto what we were talking about which is this really does seem to be a transition for a lot of us and going into a time of experimentation less than these individual discussions and small groups but really getting into larger groups and and even in the small group breakout we started creating new stuff like there's a real sense that there's room for experimentation and i think really the most important things to say the first one a few people have already said just thank you and the second one is always the most important thing which is you know i love you and we love you and there was a real sense of the creation of a space of love and real caring and really i think we can't thank you enough for that I'll give you a hug grace i'll give you a hug <laughs> good evening thank you so much grace thank you yeah if i may yeah thank you again uh, guys uh, uh, for me it was a bit uh, you know isolated during the covid break uh, this was a great relief for me and i think uh, yeah it's a great enterprise and also, I appreciate the fact that you're uh, trying to keep it live by changing the vehicle according to what the times need. And I agree with you completely that I think uh, next is a work of synthesis to do. But on that, uh, I wonder if actually, instead of it being the enterprise of a single mind, if it will not, it's my opinion of uh, working in software design and media that I think it's potentially the design of a platform that will leverage the best collective intelligence and uh, in particular uh, relevance, uh, uh, you know, uh, applying relevance to this or that content, like a different type of a rating system, as well as like a visualization to help make those things clear. I think something that lacks from uh, John Verveke is potentially, you know, the, the strip down, uh, uh, almost like PG version that a simple visual will help people make sense of like how people make sense of the world that uh, potentially John doesn't have, but maybe someone who, you know, who's like more uh, like visual, uh, visual thinker, I think could help in this enterprise. This is what I believe. Mm. Thank you. Maybe time one, one more before we go into the questions. I don't know, Nancy, did, did you unmute yourself to speak or was another accidental unmuting? Oh, no, I'm just appreciating, uh, you know, all, all the remarks and, and appreciating you and everyone here. That's mm. but thank you. Um, I had something that, that it was emerging uh, for me, really present now um, in this space. Um, just, wow, so beautiful, all of you. Um, thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Alex, for, for holding this space for us. Um, and I'm just seeing like this happening more and more of like the we space and the I space coming together. Um, and it's, it's just so beautiful. Um, like this unity, it's the unity consciousness just emerging. Um, like you're talking about like healthy masculinity, like that's, that's so, so aligned, I feel. And just like amazing, like, oh, I'm almost in tears. <laughs> um, 
and I just wanted to point out again this these kind of two processes that are uh, happening just for clarity's sake for everyone um, where it's like in the we space and the I space and so like there's like uh, in in the we space you have like attraction synergy and emergence and then in the I space you have like sentience intelligence and agency and it feels it really feels and I can see this happening and coming together more and more and more uh, and expressing itself more and more and more uh, as these like parallel processes that are becoming one process um, and so yeah it's just I just wanted to express the uh, how, how, how much gratitude I have for for seeing that in all of you. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. And yeah, and so many of the other sharings as well. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm blown away by the level of kind of awareness and um, depth, depth of kind of learning and, and practice in the uh, in the community and sort of your sharings, your observations are a kind of frameworks that I'm not familiar with, but they really resonate, they really land. Mm. And yeah, kind of harvesting that in, in, in the sort of wrap up process of the, of the different kind of concentric circles of the, the people that have been um, part of this journey with us is really what we want to kind of enable to, to happen. And I, I think, I, I really think, I want to be surprised and blown away by what this allows to catalyze and i think there's no reason why that can't be the case with the level of yeah just just the level of um as i said depth of practice and learning and in, in the people that have that have been kind of spoken to by this in 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 some way and it's very much that we've kind of curated it but yeah we've been lucky enough to 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 have interviewed and to have featured some of these incredible people and like yeah we, we've been the curators of that but but we've we've managed to curate some quite astonishing conversations and and make some amazing connections so i think like it feels very yeah the, the sort of leaving the stage at the right moment i think just takes off this sort of sense because there, there was a growing sense that i had of like everything this tension between or how it might be seen is like is this because everything's go was going through this one one avenue of rebel wisdom is there a sense of like am i boosting my own thing with the interviews or is it boosting the whole and it's sort of like that kind of process of like going towards boosting the whole rather than rather than the individual project that we've been running and like taking away that tension i think allows for something more to to grow from that yeah uh, yeah. Yeah. And sort of, I, I'm, thank you everyone for sharing. It's really touching and it's really, um, yeah, especially here because I think also what we've curated or at least made the space for is, is really amazing community as well. So it's really, um, it's, it's more significant than it's easy to put into words, I would say. Um, and the sense of, yeah, I really liked what Leilani was saying about growth. I think that's a really wonderful word. And I think this sense of unlocking the potential in this group feels really, really important as well, whatever, whatever that might, might be. And I, I think it's, I just have a sense of late of, of sort of uh, growth under the surface, mycelium waiting to burst out. That's probably because I love mushrooms, but uh, I think it's a nice metaphor. Um, and I also wanted to speak to the fact that we have, um, we have scheduled in another session where we can dive deeper into the kind of more, more details about if, what wants to emerge effectively on the 23rd. So I don't want to, I don't want it to feel rushed in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes, whatever it might be that you have to get everything out or ask all the questions. We, we did anticipate that this is going to be a process. Um, and that's something that just came up for me as well is uh, in that session, or perhaps just email us as well. We would really love to know what you would like to do within the community in the next sort of five, six months in terms of sort of like member events, for example, like I've noticed that there's, there's a little bit less engagement with our weekly events. So, so lower numbers and that, you know, and I've, we've been kind of curious as to why that is. I think it's just a, a general sense of something needing to renew, but it's an opportunity as well over the next month to, to, to do something perhaps a bit different. We don't know what that is, but I, I personally would really like to, hear any suggestions, um, maybe, yeah, yeah, I'll leave it there, but that's something that's, um, 
just in the, in the short term, um, important. So I've, there's a couple more questions. I sent them to you on WhatsApp, ah, Ali. Um, so yeah, just to address Brian's question, we've mentioned the rebranding one. Uh, he also asked, how much did you ponder the value of the community you've created and could the channel be turned over to someone who wants to maintain it, if nothing else, to keep a refuge place for people to land and explore those ideas? Um, we probably not, as Ali said. Um, if someone has a like really solid suggestion and a way that that might work, we're open to hearing it. It doesn't feel appropriate at the moment for the reasons that we've given. It feels right to feels right to to wrap it up. It does potentially feel um, how that looks and how what I would be particularly interested in is creating some doorways into the content in different ways that could then either go out on the channel or could be hosted on on the website so that people can kind of find it naturally and find different doorways into the ideas and sort of the linking like the, the connective tissue is very interesting like coming in on this and then ending up here and like the narrative journey yeah. that i think is potentially there um is is something that I think being being a, a bit more explicitly spelled out would be useful to do. So I'm I'm very open to anyone who might want to contribute on that level. Um, maybe there's an opportunity for almost re-releasing some of the films on the channel towards the end, um, like some of the mm -hmm. earlier ones. That could be something worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, and how much do you ponder the value of the community yeah definitely and we're really interested in ideas for how to continue that whether that's in some kind of relationship with emerge uh or emergent commons having some kind of uh yeah some kind of part of that conversation as well yeah we're, we're really interested in how to harvest all of the, the 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 good stuff and that's the community that's the that's the content um yeah, I think that addresses. And then there's the tell us about emerge, which I'll come to in a second. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to speak to in the relationship with with Perspectiva. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to to add to that. I mean, I think the I, this is something we've talked about a lot. The the, cura the curation of the curation it gets very meta, but like that threads that people can follow does feel like a really useful uh, and important um, thing. We, we, there was a, for a while people were working on a wiki. Um, kind of rebel wisdom wiki, which which would kind of hyperlink things together, which is um, maybe something we can revisit over the next months. Feels like quite a cool thing to do. Um, so maybe I think it's Terry's question next. Do you want to speak to that, David? Which the one about emerge and perspective? Yeah, perspective emerge yeah. and just yeah, it's useful. I think. So yes, they so emerge is sort of a sister organization to rebel wisdom, as is perspective. Perspective is. Jonathan Rousen's um, organization, or one that Jonathan Rousen created with Thomas Bjorkman. And Thomas is someone who uh, supported us initially financially to get Rebel Wisdom off the ground uh, four years ago or whatever. Um, and he he's a he's a Swedish philanthropist and Kind of very much immersed in developmental thinking and he started up perspectiva with jonathan rousen as a sort of more of a more of a it's a publishing house and it's more of a kind of think tank trying to influence sort of politics uh, whereas rebel wisdom is much more a sort of like more cultural media facing uh, arm of a similar kind of similar worldview i'd say um so Perspectiva, Evo, who many of you will be familiar with from Sense Making 101, um, is, is now working for, for them. And Emerge has a relationship with Perspectiva. It's part of the same nexus. It's, it's mainly Thomas Bjorkman and a few other people. And it's, it's intended to be a kind of network of networks of projects in this wider space, wherever you want to draw the boundaries. So the, the liminal web idea or the sense making sphere or where, where, wherever you want to kind of draw that but it's very much all of these all, all of these organizations that are heavily influenced by as i said developmental thinking um 
co combining sort of the worlds of sort of religion, spirituality, personal growth, and culture in many different ways. So Emerge is, is still in some ways a, a kind of work in progress. So there's actually an opportunity to influence its development. And if they're going to be taking on the courses that we're doing, then there's, there's probably an opportunity for them to be taking on a little bit of the, um, yeah, that there, there may be a sort of community dimension to it as well. I think there's very much an openness to that conversation. And um, yeah, I, we'll, we'll definitely be involving Jonathan and Thomas and, and others in where this conversation goes. So as, as this develops over the next few months, um, that's one of the avenues that could potentially take on some of the value that that's been created through Rebel Wisdom and, and, and take it on. Mm. And then, of course, the emerging commons. We uh, uh, perhaps doesn't need mentioning, but uh, does need mentioning is, is another place that's already emerging. To use the word emerge again, I'm just going to keep using it. Um, but I mean, we uh, yeah, we want to fully support um, yeah the kind of growth and development. I don't know if anyone from the emerging commons might like to. Uh, say something to that effect, um, but that's something that's very much uh, present for us. But, yeah. Um, Ali, uh, David, I think maybe next week at the call, um, a couple of us from Emergent Commons could speak a bit about maybe maybe some of these um, or you know like, like further the conversation about it. Yeah. If that's okay with you guys. Yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Yeah, thank yeah, you. We'll make we'll make space for that. And if you want to kind of uh yeah, let us know any thoughts in the meantime, just send us an email. Yeah. Uh and then we can kind of um yeah, you can say whatever present what whatever you want to to the yeah. gathering next week. So I think we're we're a little bit over time. And unless anyone's got anything burning they want to share before we, we close. Not medically burning, uh, metaphorically burning. Yeah. Just this. Do you guys get how much we love you? <laughs> uh, we do now. <laughs> Thank you. That's all for now. Thank you, Clay. Clay, Clay, do you get how much we love you? Yeah, do you get how much we love you is, the, is exactly the question. Yeah, oh, it's really lovely. Cool. Yes, of course. Very special. I got it. Yeah. Here, um, the the value you provided to be able to watch your videos and then actually be able to participate and talk with you and um, have one on ones with the people you brought in it's, it's been incredible. And you. yeah, and we yeah we we couldn't do it without you. Yeah. Couldn't do it without you. Yeah, it's is absolutely true. It's been, uh, yeah, it's really special. I was just thinking right now, it's like, in a sense, we've been doing it so regularly and so often that it's almost like kind of take for granted just how special it is, have a global community of people who are highly engaged, highly intelligent, um, beautiful people, um, and the regularly meeting with all of you guys. Um, I'm going to miss that a lot. Yeah, really am. Yeah, and it will continue in, in many different ways, exactly. unexpected, yeah. unexpected and profound ways, mm -hmm. for sure. Like the, the things that we've been talking about here and the, the meetings and the, the, the groundswell of whatever it was that created Rebel Wisdom is only getting bigger. Yeah. And, that's, and that's really what we want to serve next. And, and yeah, we, we're looking forward to seeing what that looks like. So, if I could chime in with a quick note of gratitude too, um, I have had my horizon and open to, to new dimensions that I am only beginning to to explore, and I thank you for uh, for doing that. And I think the the narrative completion that you are um, moving on to is is perfect. Uh, the idea of a diaspora, where we, you know, as a community can carry forth into new incarnations uh, is one that resonates with me because I find myself actually working for a, um, a large government institution and, and finding that there is, there is a nation's uh, consciousness to be, to be found and connected with and brought online. And, um, you know, I, I'm, 
um, fascinated and inspired by the opportunity to do that in other, you know, to basically to be a vector for these types of wisdom and practices into other dimensions of, of you know, society and institution and, um, and all forms of life. So thank you all. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was really good to hear as well. So, yeah, so we will have plenty of space to, to really dive into the, the next part of this um, on Monday. And uh, between now and then, please also write to us if, any, if anything comes up, if you have any um, thoughts, anything you want to share, any ideas. And we'll close this meeting with a goodbye, uh, simultaneously unmuted goodbye, as is our custom. And yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.